Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to introduce you to the idea of two different types of inventory systems, the perpetual and the periodic. Let's take a look. All right, first up, perpetual inventory systems. The name perpetual inventory system comes from the idea that these inventories are ongoing. All right, they are perpetual. And what do I mean when I say the inventory is ongoing or perpetual? I mean our updating, specifically ongoing updating of the inventory ledger. All right, so let me let me explain this in a little bit more detail. Um, basically, under a perpetual inventory system, every time a company buys inventory and every time a company sells inventory, that is going to be journalized and then posted to the inventory account. In other words, you buy inventory, inventory up. You sell inventory, inventory down with every single transaction that occurs. So it's an ongoing update to the inventory ledger. All right. As a result of this, at any given time, the company will know the quantity and the value of the inventory that it has on hand because it's constantly updating its system. Now, there is um, kind of a drawback to this constant updating of your inventory ledger, and that is your cost of goods sold, the cost of the item that you sell at any given time, has to be determined every single time you make a sale. If you think about it, if you are going to take your inventory ledger, and every time you sell, you're going to record a credit decreasing that ledger, you have to know what the value or the cost of the thing you're selling is, the cost of goods sold. And so that has to be tracked and calculated by your accounting information system for every single sale. Now, why is this a beneficial system to have? Well, it's good for high value or uniquely identifiable product, right? Think cars, right? That's the picture I have over here. Every single car has a unique identifier known as a vehicle identification number, a VIN. And that VIN is unique to that vehicle. Because of that, your system, your accounting system, can actually track for every single individual car, how much did you, as a car merchandiser, pay to obtain that car? What was your cost of the car? And therefore, when you sell that car, you know what your cost of goods sold was. You also know how much you sold that car to the customer for, so you know the revenue. You can figure out the difference to figure out what was your profit on that particular car. And you can do that with every single car in your inventory. That is the good, um, kind of the, the pro of using a perpetual inventory system. One is you can figure out gross profit down to an item by item basis. Two, um, your inventory balance is always up to date. If somebody wants to know if a particular car is on your lot, all you have to do is look in the system. You'll know if it's there or not because you're consistently um, updating. You're updating on an ongoing basis. Now, I say it's commonly used for high value or uniquely identifiable product. You definitely want to track it for high value products. When I say high value, think things like um, really, really expensive designer jewelry, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or a million dollars. Um, think of homes, right? Homes run hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Um, these are things that, that you'll want to know on an item by item basis. Uh, what was the profit you were generating by it? And so that creates a need for a perpetual inventory system. Now, a periodic inventory system. How is that different? Well, notice that first phrase, periodic. This means that your inventory account is updated periodically rather than ongoingly. Another word for periodically would be intermittently. So intermittently. I might have misspelled that, but anyway, intermittently. So in other words, you're not updating the inventory with every single transaction. Instead, you're going to update it um, specifically at the end of your accounting period. Okay, so purchases and sales transactions do not impact the inventory account. At the end of your accounting period, you're going to do what's known as a physical inventory. You're going to physically go out, count what inventory is on hand, identify it up against the system, and at that point, you're going to determine, hey, um, what inventory did I start with? What inventory am I left with? And the difference between what you started with and what you left with must be what you sold. So you just do one periodic adjustment at the end of the period that says, 
hey, difference between starting inventory and ending inventory must be the sold inventory. This is commonly used for low value or indistinguishable products, where it's not as important to know what the profit from any one product is because it's all very uniform, or it's just not worth it to track the, the, the profit on any individual product or to know exactly how many of a product you have on hand at any given time. Notice the picture I have over here, the candy and gumball machines, right? Does it matter whether or not there are 10 gumballs in the machine or 200 gumballs in the machine? No, the next customer that walks up will still get a gumball, right? You don't need to know exactly how many are in there. Does it matter whether somebody got a red gumball or a blue gumball or a yellow gumball? No, that doesn't matter either. Do you need to have this machine hooked up to a computer that can say, yep, a gumball was just bought. Here's the cost of goods sold on it. Oh, a number, another gumball was just bought. Here's the cost of goods sold on that. Oh, another gumball was bought. That just becomes too monotonous, right? It becomes too um, process intensive on the machine. Instead, it's a lot easier to just say, hey, at the beginning of the period, I dump 200 gumballs in the machine. At the end of the period, you go count, and hey, there's 50 gumballs left. That means 150 gumballs must have sold. If I know that I pay, on average, a nickel per gumball, well, I can take 150 times a nickel. That gives me my cost of goods sold. That is a periodic inventory system. You do a little math at the end of the period based on physical counts rather than tracking your cost of goods sold and your profit with each and every transaction. All right, that was your primer on perpetual and periodic inventory systems. The last thing I'll tell you is that um, this is a company decision. Neither one is wrong. It's just a choice of what a company wants to do. Also, computers make doing a perpetual system a lot more common in today's world. Um, so that's it. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, hope you join me for another video.